a giant GPU leak was just posted online, and AMD's new processors look absolutely incredible. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 35% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Alright, so CES is fast approaching and we are finally starting to get an absolute dump truck full of news dumped on us on a daily basis. And guys, it is starting to feel real good. But in any case, let's go ahead and get into this first story, which is a huge GPU leak. And this is in regards to Intel's upcoming graphics cards, which honestly, guys, I'm starting to get really excited for. In fact, I'm actually more excited for Intel's upcoming GPUs, more even so than something like Nvidia releasing their refresh or even AMD releasing some potential new cards to their lineup as well because this is a player we've never had in the space before and it'll be really interesting to see whether or not they can help fix this GPU situation, what the prices are and what the ultimate performance is as well. So first let's take a look at the leak specs and release date for the upcoming Intel GPUs and then we'll discuss whether or not Intel actually can make a dent in the GPU situation that we are currently suffering through. So this first piece of information comes comes from videocards.com and video cards got it from WCCF Tech and WCCF Tech got it from somewhere on the, it's just a whole big mess. Anyway, I'll have it linked in the description below so you can go ahead and take a look at the original sources if you want to read the whole entire thing. But the gist of the matter is, is that it looks like Intel is going to be releasing two to three new GPUs in March of 2022, which is still Q1 of 2022. And so this is coming up fast, but it's going to be a little bit longer than some people were expecting. I know some people were expecting like January January. looks like that's not going to be the case it looks like March 2022 is going to be the target at least according to this leak and what we also know is the three video cards which are likely going to be uh, released at that time are going to be the a7080 which is the 512 execution unit one which gives you 4096 FP32 core 16 gigabytes of G6 on a 256 bit bus and the typical board power will apparently be 225 watts now the next one is apparently going to be an arc a5 something with 384 execution units for a total of 3072 shaders 12 gigabytes of g6 and a 192 bit bus and then the final one is apparently going to be somewhere between 96 to 128 execution units for a total of 768 to 1024 shaders 4 gigabytes of g6 on a 64 bit bus and apparently the typical board power is likely going to be around 75 watts for this card now if you're wondering in terms of performance the a780 which is going to be the fastest card is actually speculated to be somewhere between an RTX 3070 and a 3070 Ti. And honestly, this makes a whole lot of sense why NVIDIA is starting to release a 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes because NVIDIA must know something that a lot of other people don't know. It must be getting pretty close to that 3070 Ti. And what a lot of people do know is that, well, video memory sells. So if Intel comes out with a decent amount of these cards and they have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, well, it's gonna make the 3070 Ti look a little bit silly with its eight gigabytes. So if NVIDIA wants to continue selling their 3070 Ti for a lot of money, well, they're going to have to upgrade to 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So obviously it looks like this card is going to be a serious thorn in the side of NVIDIA when it comes to around the 3070 to 3070 Ti type of performance. Now the next one, that A5 card with about 384 execution units or 3072 shaders is apparently going to be somewhere between 3060 and 3060 Ti. That does also sound about right. Uh, 12 gigabytes, I think that's going to be really strong for this card. And then finally we have this entry level card, 4 gigabytes. Uh, I honestly don't know necessarily where this is going to st you know, stack up in terms of performance, but I would guess if I was just to take a shot in the dark that we're probably talking about somewhere between like an RTX you know 3050 or even something lower than that of course we don't have a 3050 on the desktop right now but I think this is going to be more of a mobile entry level type of solution or just for something that if you want to throw into a desktop just to get you by but either way all three of these cards are looking really impressive I'm actually really liking the amount of VRAM on these cards and overall as long as the price point is good I think these could be very strong contenders when you compare them to Nvidia and 
AMD's cards that are currently on the market, especially considering that they are going to have AI acceleration as well as what appears to be very good memory bandwidth as well, because not only is the memory bandwidth itself looking good, but apparently, at least according to some leaks I've seen in the past, I think they're also going to have some sort of, you know, beefy cache on these cards as well. So I think the memory bandwidth is going to be good there, so you won't have to worry about that. So yeah, they're looking very, very strong. The only question is, are there going to be enough? Now, there's some people who are suggesting that maybe these Intel cards are going to completely fix everything, but we have to take a look on what these are being produced on to come to a conclusion. So what we know right now is that TSMC 7 nanometer is producing basically all of AMD cards, and then Samsung 8 nanometer is producing basically all of Nvidia's cards. However, there is a new node that's coming out from TSMC called TSMC 6 nanometer, and this is going to be different from 7 nanometer. And in theory, this should allow them to produce just a ton more graphics cards in general but again we have to ask the question is it going to be enough? And for that, I have to answer, probably not. Now, it is going to be a massive increase. Don't get me wrong. You probably are going to see a lot more graphics cards on the market, and this is likely going to lead to a decrease in price, especially considering that mining profitability also seems to be decreasing, as well as most of those people who are willing to spend just, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars for gaming cards have mostly already gotten their cards at this point. However, I still don't think it's going to be enough. We might be talking even somewhere as much as, like, maybe 20 or even 30 percent more cards start to hit the market and that's going to be an absolutely huge deal don't get me wrong and it's going to be a massive deal for gamers and this is going to help you guys out a ton like i mentioned this is going to lead to decreasing prices you could maybe even overnight see prices decrease as much as maybe even 20 percent as soon as these cards start to get released and into the hands of gamers however this is not going to bring the msrps overnight from like two thousand dollars on an rtx 3080 all the way back to $700. That's just not going to be a reality. Even though it is going to be good, something like an LHR RTX 3080 might drop from something like $1,400 to like $1,100 or $1,200, you know, shortly after these release if the market starts to get a lot more saturated by having these cards on the market. But again, that still is significantly overpriced. But overall, I'm still very excited for these cards. I'm excited to see what the availability, the pricing is like, as well as the ultimate final performance. I think these are going to be very strong contenders. And once again, I think this is going to do nothing but help gamers get that better price and get that better option of trying to buy a graphics card in the near future. But now let's quickly talk about those new Ryzen CPUs that are going to be coming out. Now the CPUs in question are apparently going to be the Ryzen 7 6800H, Ryzen 9 6900HX, and the Ryzen 9 6980HX. Now these three CPUs in question are going to be mobile processors, so if you're excited for something on the desktop, it's not going to be these specific CPUs, though keep in mind that those are going to be coming out in the near future as well. However, this is going to give us an idea of what the next generation CPUs from AMD could be capable of because these are also being produced on the 6 nanometer node. And now if you take a look at them, uh, starting with the 6800H, this is going to be capable of 4.7 gigahertz for the max boost. 6900HX is going to be 4.9 and the 6980HX is going to be 5 gigahertz for its max boost clock. And this is only a 45 watt CPU on a mobile processor. So yeah, this is some really impressive stuff. They're all 8 core 16 thread as well. So it just gives you an idea that yes, AMD's upcoming processors or anything they're producing on 6 nanometer is likely going to be capable of higher clock speeds and lower power draw, which is definitely a good thing for gamers as we, you know, <laughs> get higher clock speeds, obviously more performance, but you know, more realistically getting these power draw numbers down could definitely help, especially considering that some graphics cards are exceeding like 400 or even 500 watts on certain models. So yeah, getting that power drawdown is going to be a good thing and these are looking to be some very impressive processors so if you're looking for a mobile solution going into 2022 or you're just excited for what's coming up with Andy's next generation desktop processors it looks like they are going to be really really fast. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think Intel's upcoming graphics cards are going to fix the whole GPU situation, or do you think it won't make much of a difference? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.